Hello everyone. Welcome to our webinar. Myself Kuntal Dash Gupta. Today in our webinar, we are going to discuss about maximize tax credit with Busy and GST. First, we'll go through a PPT under which we can get to understand about the concept of maximize tax credit and also we'll see the concept of the features. We'll understand about the features that is related to this input tax credit. And then we'll practically move on to the busy software where we'll go to see the options one by one. After the sessions, we'll have a QA round also where you can raise your queries in the chat box. First coming on the objectives, let's have a quick view on the objectives of today's session. So what we are going to discuss on this webinar, first we'll have an introduction about the maximum or maximize input tax credit concept. Then we'll have a knowledge about the GST compliances. Then we'll understand about the input tax credit management with Busy. how we can do the input tax credit or what are the features that are available in Busy to maintain your input, ta input tax credit. Fourth is the GST audit reports. We'll also check on the GST audit reports. What are the verifications reports that you can get from Busy through GST audit reports? And last is the QA session where you can raise your queries in our QA chat box. Starting with the introduction of input tax credit. Now, what is input tax credit? Input tax credit or input tax claim under GST refer to the ability of a registered business to offset or claim a credit from for the GST or goods and services tax paid on their purchase of goods and service. In other words, we can say that it's allow businesses to deduct the GST that have been paid on input from the GST that were collected on the sales. That means if you are going to purchase any products, if you are going to um, get a purchase bill from any supplier related to a service bill or it may be a goods bill, on that, you have to pay the GST from your pocket while purchasing the goods. In that case, you can claim input tax credit on that kind of purchase entry, or you can do the adjustment from your output GST also. Whatever GST you are going to collect from your sale transactions, then that GST can be adjusted with your input GSTs. Okay, or you can take the input tax credit on that related purchase entries. This mechanism prevent double taxation in the supply chain and help business avoid pay GST on the same value multiple times. So these mechanisms easily help the business owners or the business organizations to verify or to take a record that uh, whether we are going to pay the GST on the same value multiple times or not. Now coming on the GST compliances, what is GST compliances? GST compliances is a kind of act on which or under rule where you can maintain uh, your GST summarized report, where you can maintain uh, the related information for the requirement of goods and services tax systems in a, on a particular adjudications or you can say on a particular jurisdiction, It involves accurately calculating reports and paying the GST on goods and services as, as well as fulfilling other related obligations such as registrations, record keeping and filing returns. That means GST compliances is the entire system through which we maintain our GST records or GST transactions. We file our GST returns. We also check the uh, verified data on which we can take the input tax credits. So each and every information that is related to GST for our records that is maintained under GST compliances. 
So if any company doesn't maintain any GST compliances, so non-compliances can result in penalties and legal consequences. Now coming on the features that is input tax credit management with busy. Now we'll look on the features that busy is providing through which you can maximize your calculation of your input tax credit in your transactions or you can record your input tax credit. So what are the features? Let have a look one by one. First in busy we'll having an option in the account masters where you are creating an expenses ledger where you can mention your ITC eligibility. If you are going to create an expenses ledger and you want to mention a ITC eligibility for that particular ledger as input service or input goods. That means whenever you are going to select that particular ledger and you're going to record a transaction, it may be a purchase transaction or it may be a general entry. So in that case, you can easily track the ITC eligibility of that particular expenses. So we are having an uh, option in busy to tag the ITC eligibility or to maintain or to mention the ITC eligibility in your account master. Mostly you can use this ITC eligibility in the expenses masters. Select ITC eligibility during purchase transaction. That means whenever you are going to record a purchase transaction in busy, you will find an option to select the ITC eligibility. ITC eligibility means input tax credit eligibility. That means whatever purchase you are going to record, whether it's a service purchase, whether it's a goods purchase, whether it's a capital goods purchase. So accordingly that in the GST form or in the file or in the return, the section will reflect. So that reflection takes place on the basis of this ITC eligibility. Whatever ITC eligibility you select in the transaction, accordingly that the reflections takes place in the forms or in the GST reports. Reconcile GSTR 2A and 2B. Now, before going to the concept of reconciliation report, let me clear one thing that GST 2A and 2B are more or less a same form, but there is a certain differentiation. Differentiation is that GSTR 2A is a dynamic and uh, 2B is static. Dynamic in the sense, uh, it updated, it keep on continuous updated when and where when and where the supplier used to upload the transaction. So GSTR 2A is completely keep on updating, but 2B is constant. Once it updated in 2B, it will be constant for the particular month. Okay. Now reconciliations help us to verify our transaction with our supplier transaction. That means when a supplier file a GSTR 1, then it's auto draft to a GSTR 2A and 2B. So if we download our 2A, 2B from the portal and we match our transaction, whatever transaction we do in the busy software, we can match our transaction because for us, it's a purchase entry. We are recording as a purchase entry in busy, but for the supply, it's a sale entry. So we will match our purchase entry with our supplier sales entry. So we can get the mismatch reports also through this reconciliation options in busy. Monthly ITC tagging as per 2A and 2B. Whatever 2A to 2B in busy, we are having an auto download option of 2A and 2B. So if you download the 2A and 2B form in busy, then accordingly that you can also claim the transaction. That means you can claim the input tax credit on the purchase transaction that has been matched with your supplier. Means you have done a purchase entry in busy and your supplier has also filed the same purchase in the return in the GSTR1 form. So you can simply get the detail and you can simply claim the transaction in busy. ITC claim and summary register, whatever transaction you are going to claim. So you will get an individual report for having that ITC claim summary register. Okay. So in this report, you will get to see what are the transaction where you have claimed the input tax credit. So it will show you the only the transaction that is related to your ITC claim where the status is showing that this transaction has been claimed from your end. Check voucher status from ledger. That means uh, if you are going to see a count ledger, if you are going to see a ledger for a supplier or for a parties. So accordingly that uh, whatever transaction reflect on that ledger report, if you select that particular transaction and if you press F6 button, you can see the end stand 
scenario or the instant update that this this transaction has been uploaded in 2A, 2B or it has been filed in 2A, 2B or not. It is showing in 2A and 2B or not. So you can get the return filing status of that particular transaction on the account ledger reports also. Similar way in purchase register and in bills payable reports also you can see the instant updations of your uh, transaction, whether the transaction has been filed or not, or when it has been filed, whether it's showing in GST or 2A, 2B or not. So you can see the entire history of the GST filing against the particular transaction through a F6 button. Whenever you see the purchase register, if you need to see the records of that particular transaction, after seeing the purchase register, you can select any of the transaction against which you want to see the records. You select that particular transaction, you press F6 button, you can get the entire history of that particular transaction. Pick relevant ITC from monthly ITC tagging in GSTR 3B. Now in GSTR 3B, we would get to see both the input and output transactions. Also, if we claim the input tax credit in any purchase transaction through our monthly ITC tagging uh, report, then that transaction will also reflect in GSTR 3B in the section all other ITC. So whatever transaction where you are keeping a status or updating a status that you have claimed that transaction. So that transaction will reflect in your GSTR 3B also. So whenever you're going to see GSTR 3B reports or returns in busy, you will get the uh, detail showing in the all other ITC row. Now let's have a quick look on all these features practically in busy. Now first we'll get to see how we can define or how we can set our ITC eligibility in account master. That means whatever expenses master you are creating. That's for example, I'm modifying any expenses master for example, advertisement and publicity. So whenever you are creating an expenses master, you will get an option to select your ITC eligibility. That means if you are going to record any transaction, it may be a general entry or it may be any kind of purchase entry. So in that case, if this ledger is reflecting or is if this ledger is selected on that particular transaction, so against this ledger, it will reflect as ITC eligibility, input service or input goods, whatever you select in the master, it will record accordingly that in the GSTR reports. Okay, so you are getting an option to set your ITC eligibility so that you can claim the uh, expenses value also so that if you are paid certain tax related to these expenses ledger against these expenses ledger so that you can claim the input tax credit against the expenses ledger. Second uh, option is select ITC el eligibility during purchase transaction. That means whenever you are going to do a purchase entry from the transaction column, you will find uh, option to select the ITC eligibility. That means if you are going to record a purchase voucher, it may be a service purchase bill or it may be a goods purchase bill. So whatever kind of purchase voucher you are recording under ITC el eligibility as per GST rule. So you can select that kind of ITC eligibility. If you want to take input tax credit on this purchase and you want to take input tax credit against as a service, or as a goods or service. So you can select that if this purchase voucher is a service voucher, then we will select this option called input service. If I'm going to purchase a goods that I'm going to sell further, but I want to take input tax credit on this goods purchase entry also, then I will select input goods service. If I don't want to take any ITC eligibility on this purchase, then I will select this ITC restriction due to pause or uh, section 17.5 ineligible ITC. So you are getting a options to select whether you want to take an input tax credit, whether you are going to take an input tax credit on the basis of service or in the basis of goods. Reconcile GSTR 2A and 2B. First of all, if you need to auto download your 2A and 2B, then for that you have to put your GST portal user ID in the administration configure features and options, GST options, here you have to put the GST portal username and make sure that in your portal you have 
enable your manage api system on the basis of 6 hour or 30 days whatever is your mode then you can auto download your 2a and 2b from transaction gst miscellaneous utilities reconcile gst data so before going to reconcile or before going to see the reconcile report you can get an option to download gst data json data 2a and 2b if you click on this option you can click on this auto download you click the download button so if the supplier has filed the return up to which period the suppliers file the return till that period the data will get downloaded automatically over here against the download you can get the reconciliation report as per 2a and 2b so if you want to see the reconciliation report as per 2a you can see report on the basis of party wise you can see report on the basis of voucher wise so if i select this report i can select this particular month from which month to which month i want to verify my transaction with the supplier transaction if the supplier has filed the return or not and I want to reconcile my data with the supplier filing data. So here I can press OK button to see the detail. Here you can also keep a filterization in your report that whether you want to exclude the RCM entries or you want to include the RCM entries or you want to see only the RCM entries. If I said all, then it will also include the RCM transactions. So it's saying that February month doesn't exist. That means I doesn't download the February month data. So if I proceed further up to which date I have got the data, it will show where it will show the full match document showing that 164 document is match. If I double click over here, if I press enter so from here, I can get the detail of the transaction that is match. That means in busy, I have done this transaction and the supplier also filed the same transaction in the portal. So I'm getting match in this case. So I can easily match my transaction with the return filing transaction that done by the supplier through the reconciliation 2a if i want to see party wise i can go with the party wise and i can select the particular month and month if i only want to see the mismatch parties i can enable this to only see the mismatch transactions and the mismatch transaction of the mismatch parties so if i proceed then it will only show me the mismatch transactions from here i can see that in busy i have done this uh, number of transaction is showing 14, but in uh, the supply has filed only 12 uh, vouchers. So there is a mismatch. So it's only showing the mismatch transactions. Okay. Now monthly ITC tagging. After getting auto download of your 2A and 2B. Now, if you reconcile, also you reconcile your data, you match your data. After matching your data, you want to claim the transaction, that transaction that has been matched with your supplier. So you can claim the transaction from this report called monthly ITC tagging as per GSTR 2A. Okay. As well as GSTR 2B also. So if I select on this, if I want to see the report party wise or date wise, if I select date wise, I can mention the specific month, starting month and the ending month. And if I want to claim the ITC accordingly, the downloaded data of 2A, then I can enable this. If I want to match or if I want to claim the transaction as per 2A data, so I will select as per 2A and I press OK to proceed. So here I can see the detail that these are the transactions that are showing in highlighted color. So these transactions are not matched. So this transaction are matched and its ITC status is showing pending. Now, if I want to claim in, in this transaction that this transaction is matching with the supplier transaction who has filed the transaction in the return. So I can easily claim on this transaction. I can select this transaction. I can press F4 button. Okay. To claim the transaction. Okay. Uh, I can select the particular return period when I'm going to claim and I want to, uh, also set a status that it has been found in GSTR 2B or in, uh, state in 2B or what is the period where the data has been seen in GSTR 2B. So before, if I'm going to claim the transaction, if I want to see the status of this transaction in 2B, then I can press F6 button. I can select this. I can press F6 button to see the status, whether this entry has been found in 2BA or 2A or not, whether it has been filed or not by the supplier so that I can claim the transaction. So this, you can see that before going to claim the transaction through F4 button, you can easily see the status through F6 button. So if you can select the particular row and you press F6 button to see the status of that particular transaction, you can see it. 
check voucher status from ledger now coming on the report from which or before going to this voucher status report let me provide you another report that is the itc claim summary report that means whatever claim you have done from this report so it will show only in this claim summary or in claim register that means only the claim transaction will show in this report no other unclaimed transaction will show in this report okay now coming on the uh, check voucher status from ledger that means from account ledger if i want to see the transaction status whether the transaction is filed or not so if i want to see the status directly from the account books ledger then i can go to display account books ledger account wise standard one account i can select particular ledger from here okay and against that ledger i can press okay button to see the detail of that particular ledger so it's showing against this ledger i have i have done this this kind of transaction i have done purchase and i have done payment and i have done a debit note so if i want to see the status of this transaction whether it has been filed or not i can select, simply select the transaction i can press f6 button so it will show me the status from my ledger also so if i want to see the status of my transaction from my account ledger report then i can see it through the shortcut key called f6 also the status can be seen from the purchase register and bills payable report that means if i go to account registers purchase registers from here if i want to see the reports so from here also i can select particular transaction i can press f6 button to see the status okay same way if i want to see the status from my outstanding analysis report and under outstanding i will find a option called bills payable because i am going to see the status of my purchase transaction whether the supplier has filing filed the transaction or not in the portal so i will select bills payable i will select one party or will select group of party if i want to see group of party then i can select the sundry creditor group and i can press okay button to see the transaction against that sundry creditor group and if i select any of the transaction if i press f6 button so i can get the status from here also from bills table also so f6 is the common key through which i can get the status of my transactions the gst filing status of my transaction from my purchase register also from my bills table report also from my voucher ledger that means account ledger reports also now if i want to see the gst 3b report and i want to see the itc tagging detail on my gstr 3b returns form also in report also then i can go to display gst reports gst returns and if i want to see the 3b gstr 3b if i want to see the screen report gstr 3b i will click on the screen report gstr 3b here an option is available pick relevant itc from monthly itc tagging why that means whatever itc or input tax you have claim in the monthly itc tagging report i am showing once again the report it's on the transaction gst miscellaneous utilities under gst miscellaneous utilities you will find an option called monthly itc tagging as per 2a and 2b so whatever itc claim you have done on the transaction on this report that entry will reflect on 3b if you enable this option that means it's saying that you want to pick the relevant itc transaction on this report i said yes and you want to see the report if you enable this then you have to see the report month wise so if i going to see the report month wise i mentioned the starting the first april and i mentioned the ending date 30th of april if i press okay then it will reflect on my all other itc here so if i have claim any transaction then it will reflect on my all other itcs if i am i am i claim the transaction on uh, june july or whatever period that means on july it's not may not been downloaded so if i go to see the report on may no so i having the records for 1st april to 38 april so if any claim i have done on on the 38 april or within the 38 april transaction so that transaction will reflect on my 
all other ITC section or in all other ITC reports in the row. Okay. So these are the input tax credit features that busy is providing through which you can calculate your maximum input tax credit from busy. Now coming on the GST audit reports. So let me share the PPT once again in GST audit reports. You will be having certain reports like common mistakes. Common mistakes means if you have done certain mistakes in your master, like say, for example, you have not mentioned tax category in your item masters. You have not mentioned tax. Uh, you have not mentioned the HSN code or the SSC code for your item. You have not mentioned the party GSTN number in the party master creation time. So these are the common mistakes that you can track from GST audit report. Party wise invalid GSTN number. If you have mentioned GSTN number, but that GSTN number is invalid. So if you want to get the record, what are the parties where I have mentioned invalid GSTN number, then you can get from GST audit reports. Invalid tax rate in voucher. That means if you have mentioned a, a tax rate in your item, let's say for example, 18% in your item master, but whenever you select that particular item and you have done the transaction with 12% GST, that means you have done, done a wrong transaction. In item master, you have mentioned 18%, but in transaction you have done, uh, you have recorded the transaction with 12% GST. So that kind of transaction will reflect on invalid tax rate in voucher reports. Reconciliation accounts and GST. Reconcile accounts and GST. That means from this report, you can get to see the taxable amount differentiation. That means, for example, if you are going to record a purchase transaction where you have selected a service item, suppose professional fees. And in this case, you find out that professional fees is tagged with the professional fees ledger. The item is tagged with the professional fees ledger. That, that means the professional fees item record will not reflect the sale ledger. So if re it reflects directly on the sale ledger, then according to GST, the taxable amount will be as per GST. But if I mention any particular individual ledger, with the item or I tag the professional fees item with the professional fees ledger. I say that I don't want to reflect the professional fees amount in the sale ledger. I will maintain an individual ledgers. So in that case, the differentiation will arise or you can track the differentiation that as per GST, the taxable amount is this and as per account, the taxable amount is this. So you can get a report accordingly that in busy GST expenses audit. That means whatever transaction, if you are going to record a general transaction in general entry, you have selecting any expenses that is GST applicable expenses entry or ledger where you have mentioned the ledger is under GST applicable. And whenever you record the general entry with that expenses transaction, you select the GST nature as register expenses or uh, RCM expenses. So whatever kind of expenses related GST nature you have selected in the general entry. So you can easily filter that kind of transaction from this GST audit reports. Let's see in busy the features in GST reports under GST report in the display option, you will find the report called GST audit report. So if you click on this, you will find common mistakes. As I was explaining in the PPD, that common mistakes means if you have done any mistakes, whether your mistakes you have done in the state master, that means whether you have created a new state where you have doesn't mention the state code because whenever you mention the GSTN number, we all know that the first two digit come the state code. So if you are creating a new state in busy and you have not mentioned the state code, then that is an error or that is a mistake at your end unit master. That means if you have created some units like say for piece meter kgs, where you also find out a UQC unit quantity code. So GST as per GST rules, we have to mention some unique quantity code. That means if I am mentioning PKT over here, then I also have to mention PKT or any other unit over here. So I can't keep this field blank. So it will create problem when I file the return. Okay. So you have to rectify this so you can get these from the common mistakes report. In case of item master, you can also see that I have done some error in this uh, item master. I have not mentioned the HSN or the SSC code for this item. So it's also showing in the common mistakes. Similar way in account master also you will find out that these are the invalid account or these are the invalid ledgers where I have not mentioned anything. I have not mentioned the SSC code 
I've not mentioned the uh, the tax categories. Okay, so these can be checked through GST audit report. The common mistakes can be checked through GST audit report. Party wise invalid GST number. If you have created some parties and you have mentioned GST number also in the party master or whenever you're going to create some party name from the account master, you have mentioned some GST number over here. But whether the GST number is correct or not, how you can verify or how you can get to filter the parties who were your GSTN number is invalid. So you can get this, this kind of parties from this report, party wise invalid GSTN. So whoever party is having the invalid GSTN number that can be checked from this report. Invalid tax rate in voucher. That means, as I said in the PPD that if you are done, done a transaction with a item where you have mentioned the tax category in the item master, 18%, but you have done a transaction with 12% GST. So you have done a mistake in the transaction because your item is 18% and you, and you have done a transaction with 12%. So if you need to verify that kind of transaction, if you need to keep a track on that kind of transaction, so you can get it from invalid tax rate in voucher reports under GST audit report. So if you want to see the kind of, kind of transaction of sales or purchase or account vouchers, if I want to see the transaction of sales, then I will select sales. And under sales also, there are different type of transaction. That means local CGST, IG, uh, SGST type of billing also that can be done or IGST type of sale bill can also be done. So if I want to see a combined report, I can go to combine. I can mention the starting date and ending date. And if I press OK button, then it will verify and it will show me the particular transaction where I have done some mistakes. That means on that transaction, I have used an item where item tax category was something and I have used something in the transactions. So you can see right now I have only one transaction where I have done this kind of mistakes. If I double click and show you the mistakes, what mistakes I have done. You can see in the item masters, I have tagged the tax category 18%, but in GST, I have mentioned it at 6%, CGST and SGST 6%. Though it will show you a message while saving the transaction that you are doing a wrong transaction, but still, if anybody omit this and proceed the transaction, then that record can be also catch from this report or can be captured from this report. Now coming on the report called reconcile accounts and GST. That means on this report, if you want to see the report on the basis of sales transaction, I select the sales. I mention a specific date. I press OK button. Here, what will reflect, reflect the things that it will reflect the taxable amount. That means it will show you the exact taxable amount as per GST and as per account. As per account and as per GST means if I show you in this transaction, you can see that uh, in this transaction, your taxable amount is near about 1 lakh. Where if you figure out that if I see that if I want to tag this furniture with a specific ledger called furniture and fixture, or if I use any bill sundries where I have, let's say, for example, I'm using some bill sundries over here. Okay. I'm using this as I 5% I'm mentioning some amount over here. I'm clicking apply tax. Okay. Now, re accordingly showing the taxable amount is 7,000. Okay. In furniture, I have mentioned 18%. Okay, I'm selecting 18% over here. Now okay, you can see as per GST showing, showing 7,000 and as per accounts, there is no thing taxable amount available. So as per GST, it is 7,000 because in the bills and I can see that freight and forwarding is also under the GST where I have created the bills and freight and forwarding where I have mentioned the a, a different ledger. That means I don't want to adjust in sale amount. So if I enable this adjust in sale amount, 
what will happen if I enable that the, this freight and forwarding charges will also reflect in my sale ledger. If I re pick the freight charges once again. So here you can see that the taxable detail, the taxable amount, the IGST column, the CGST column, whatever you are recording in the transaction that is reflecting as per account sales, GST and account sales. So as per account sales also showing that actual CGST is 630 and uh, SGST is also 630. As per GST is also same. So if there is any differentiation, it will show in the taxable amount. GST expenses audit, that means uh, before showing this report, let me show you the transaction. Whenever you record a general entry from busy, you will find this GST natures that what kind of general entry you are passing on or what kind of payment entry. Whenever you're going to do a payment entry, also you will find the GST nature. Okay. So that means if you are going to record any general entry or payment entry on the basis of RCM expenses or exempted expenses or composition expenses or non GST expenses. So that kind of nature related transaction will reflect on this GST expenses audit report. That means if you want to see the expenses ledger or if you want to see the record of that particular expenses ledger as per the GST nature, that means if I only want to see the RCM expenses transaction or the RCM expenses ledger entries, I can specify the GST nature. I can specify the starting date and ending date. If I press OK button, I can get to see only I have done one entry with the carriage inward ledger. That is an RCM ledger. Sorry, not one entry it's showing the summary. If I double click over here, I can get the entire entries against this carriage inward it's showing date wise. As I have not mentioned any voucher number in the transaction. So voucher number is showing blank, but it's showing date wise that in this transaction, I can see the GST and nature is showing RCM. So I can get easily filter the report on GST expenses audit, whether I want to see only the RCM expenses transaction. If I want to see only the non GST expenses transaction, if I want to see only the composition expenses transaction. Okay. So you can see expenses GST nature wise, or you can see GST nature expenses wise. So you can see the report in two variant way. One variant saying that you want to see the report as per expenses GST nature wise, or you want to see GST nature wise expenses wise. So if you select GST nature expenses wise, then you can select all expenses. Then you can select, then you have first have to select the GST nature against which nature you want to see the detail. So you can mention your starting date, ending date, and you can get the entire detail as per GST nature expenses wise. So these are the GST audit report that you can get from busy and you can easily maintain your GST records and use an, you can easily re verify your uh, transactions if you have done any common mistakes or not if you want to check that you can easily check through gst audit report and also for calculating the maximum input tax credit from busy you can use the features that i have shown in this webinar